in a village near an enchanted forest. Jack, a poor miller's son, inherited a cat named Puss from his late father. Jack was disheartened, thinking that his life would be filled with hardship and struggle. One day, as Jack sat under a tree, feeling sorry for himself, Puss approached him and spoke, surprising Jack greatly. Master, don't be sad. If you give me a pair of boots and a bag, I will make sure that you become a wealthy and respected man. Jack, though puzzled by the talking cat, decided to trust Puss. He found a pair of old boots and gave them to the clever cat, who put them on and immediately looked quite dashing. Jack also handed Puss a simple cloth bag. With his new accessories, Puss set off into the forest. He used his wits to catch a plump rabbit, which he placed in the bag. Then, he hurried to the royal palace and requested an audience with the king. The rabbit sat in his bag, curious about what Puss wanted to do. When he met the king, Puss bowed deeply and presented the rabbit. Your Majesty, he said, I bring you a gift from my master, the Marquis of Casabas. The king was pleased with the gift and thanked Puss, who then returned to Jack. Over the next few weeks, Puss continued to bring the king gifts of game, always claiming they were from the Marquis of Carabos. The king grew curious about this generous nobleman and wanted to meet him. One sunny afternoon, Puss instructed Jack to go for a swim in the river. While Jack was swimming, Puss hid his master's clothes and waited for the king's carriage to pass by. When it did, Puss ran up to it in great distress, crying, Help, help! My master, the Marquis of Carabos, has been robbed. The king, recognizing Puss, immediately ordered his guards to help. They pulled Jack from the river and dressed him in fine clothes. The king, impressed by Jack's appearance, invited him to ride in his carriage. As they traveled, Puss ran ahead and encountered some farmers working in the fields when the king passes by and asks, who owns these fields? Say they belong to the Marquis of Casabas, Puss advised the farmers, who agreed to avoid upsetting the talking cat. Sure enough, when the king's carriage rolled by, he asked the farmers who owned the land. The Marquis of Casabas was the response, impressing the king with Jack's supposed wealth and land. Finally, Puss reached a grand castle owned by a powerful ogre. The ogre had magical powers and could transform into any creature he wished. Puss asked the ogre to turn into a lion, and the ogre proudly did so. Puss then asked, but can you turn into something as small as a mouse? The ogre, eager to show off, transformed into a tiny mouse. Quick as a flash, Puss pounced the mouse, with the ogre gone, the castle was now empty. When the king arrived, Puss welcomed him to the castle, proclaiming it to be the home of the Marquis of Casabas. Jack accepted the king's offer of marrying his daughter, whom he loved at first sight. And so, Jack, with the help of his clever cat Puss in Boots, became a wealthy and respected man. He and the princess lived happily ever after in the grand castle. And Puss became a trusted advisor, living a life of comfort and luxury. And from that day on, Jack always remembered to be kind and grateful for the clever cat who had changed his life.